it, ladies and gentlemen. We're on Overgrowth and spawning in the bottom left-hand position as the Red Protoss player. One of the success stories of the Foreign Hope. Not doing so well in the main event, but he is out to make a name for himself on day number three. Representing Vega Squadron, we have DMC. And his opponent in the top right-hand corner, representing a Team Liquid.net. He's had a difficult start to this tournament, to say the least, but this is one of the guys who, when we say he has difficult starts to tournaments, he more often than not comes back even stronger than before. He's looking to do that with a win now to propel him into the top half of this table. Can he do it? It's Snoot. Now, many will know that Snoot, of course, is taking a bit of downtime or at least uh, reducing the intensity of his StarCraft actions after DreamHack Stockholm. He's just chilling for a little bit, but as Rotterdam quite rightfully pointed out yesterday, while he may be taking it uh, a bit lower key, focusing on some other aspects of his life for the next couple of weeks or months, what is worth pointing out is that you don't lose your ability of being a fantastic top tier StarCraft player overnight. It's not like he's going to suddenly be unable to play the game or anything like that. He may not oh, be getting yeah. the best results, but he's just going to be a little bit more chilled. And I actually really like the fact that Snoot is taking a bit of time for himself because that man works so incredibly hard. He is so relentlessly focused and it's very easy to burn yourself out. No, it, it totally is, man. You can't, uh, like you said, you, you don't lose that kind of ability overnight. You absolutely don't. And uh, to suggest otherwise, you know, it... It's just complete pish tosh, frankly. Um, you, there are might be, you know, there are some nuances that you see. Occasionally, you get situations where players are like, "Well, hang on a second. This happened in the meta last week, and you're not currently obeying what I think you should be doing." Yeah, you get bits like that here and there. But as far as your macro is concerned, as far as when your knee-jerk reaction needs you to micro twelve units at once, you can pretty much still do that. I mean, take a look at how long, uh, for example. After winning GSLs, players like Nest T and MVP are competitive. Like, that yeah. That should really give you all you need to know. Now, in terms of openings in this game, we did have a Forge first come down from DMC. Uh, unfortunately for him, Snoot did open with a pool first opening, so he's not going to be at any risk of being cannon rushed. Snoot is taking the gold base, though! Oh, man, Ooh. here we go. Game on, ladies and gents. We have a gold base being taken here from Snoot. Really interested to see how long it takes for DMC to spot this. Snoot's going to be the one showing us uh, something a little bit unorthodox. Now, bear in mind, the gold base does tend to be a little bit out of the way. Why do I say that? If we have a probe scout from DMC, for example, or wanting to put down a pylon to attack the natural, you tend to go via the right-hand ramp next to where the Zergling is taking out the destructible debris now, and then from there, take a look into the third base location. You actually have to go out of your way to scout the gold, and for that reason, uh, there might be, there's a chance here that DMC won't actually scout the gold medals until basically the gold is saturated. Well, it's possible, but I think this little probe out to the left-hand side is likely to come back this way. It's certainly a very common position to put a pylon up around this area, so it could get seen, but Snoot, he's doing all the right things to make sure that it's safe. He's trying to take down this destructible debris. He's working away at it steadily, and of course, with that, it means that he's got a quicker reinforced distance to there. The other thing Snoot knows, of course, is with this Overlord, he added a lot of information mm. about the opening DMC went form. Forge into a Nexus, unless you get a cannon rush down, uh, doesn't have super amounts of quick aggression off. Uh, what will be good to see is that Snoot uh, has spotted the Forge, is of course researching that plus one, so he's going to be aware of potential follow-ups. Every Zerg knows that Forge fast expansion can lead into an immortal sentry all in, any big gateway plays. Um, yep. DMC's well, not been afraid to use them. I mean, that's what the Overlord as well, the top left-hand side of DMC's uh, base is for. Because Snoot knows, hang on a second, plus one is being uh, is being researched there. So uh, I'm going to, at some opportune moment, just fly into the main, see if there's a whole bunch of gateways or if you're going to be going for that fast robo. He's going and with the Happy Zealots again. <gasps> the three Happy Zealots. Okay, basically, he did this yesterday. and is he, He's going to go past the gold. He's going via the gold. He yep. knows. And there we go. Now he's seen the gold. The Happy Zealots. This was done yesterday up against um, Scarlet, actually. No, it was done up against Nurture when he played Nurture before. 
So the Happy Zealots weren't too successful then, but this time Snoop could actually be running into a few problems. A pylon is now on its way down over to the left-hand side, a second one also coming on through. And without the Spine yet done and without the Roach Warren, this is actually getting a decent amount of work done. The Spine Quarter is going to get taken down quickly, and then that just leaves the Queen. Wow, and all of a sudden this gold base is going to have to be vacated. Now, bear in mind, some minerals have actually been mined from this gold base already. There's a chance that the hatchery at least has paid for itself, but really he wants a lot more purchase of this. Here come additional links. The Queen and the Mothership Core going at it. The Mothership Core at the moment coming off worse for wear, and he's going to have to move out. The Zealots, though, if they take out the links, they will be able to clean up this Queen. There's the second Queen just in the nick of time, and I think her comrade will be saved here. He needs to keep running, though. Queen is able to get away just. No additional warp ins there from DMC. In terms of the resources lost, slightly more down for DMC overall. But Snoot did take some losses there. 16 lings were able to die, but... Four zealots and a mothership core. Oh man, here come the gateways, dude. The three more gates yep. there. The overlord at the top left of the base hasn't actually spotted what DMC is doing yet. We've got plus two and blink on the way. There can be absolutely no doubt in my mind the timing that he's going for here. The trouble is Snoot already has the roaches coming out. This would have worked a lot stronger if the zealots came out quicker. Uh, he did have four gates when the last three zealots were picked off, but didn't warp them in instantly. That means that Snoot's had chance to get that roach on finish. He's got a decent number of blings out. Speed is about to kick in. And so, while pumping out these zealots is good against only zerglings, with the roaches coming, it's going to be so much more that difficult. Queen. Nope. <laughs> there was so much micro to keep that queen alive. And, you know what? With the roaches coming, this will be more difficult. But at the same time, with the roaches coming and blink completing, uh, I think that could be a massive challenge as well. I think Snoot has a lot of work on his hands if in the long term he wants to keep hold of this gold base. Those happy zealots are doing a lot of work. And I like the fact that the stalkers are just picking off a drone or two in the meantime, going, well, hang on a second. If I pick off one of these while everything else is fighting, that's worth a lot more to you than a normal, you know, a normal third base drone. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick off two or three here or there. The total killed now, you know, only two, but he now has a chance to snipe off a lot more. These stalkers are going to be quite irritating. The Hydralisk then is nearly finished. The important thing for Snoot is that he's going to be very acutely aware that his opponent doesn't have a great economy behind this. And so if he gets out some more roaches, some more lings, and keeps this third base alive, he's actually quite safe. But that's going to be hard to do. More bling stalkers coming on through. The Mothership Core is back on the field, giving high ground vision. And it does have enough energy for a mass recall. Yeah, and... Uh... Uh, well, we'll see if he needs to use it here. Blink is complete. Plus two is complete as well. That's a lot of army, frankly, to deal with at the moment. There is. Wow, we've got the time warp as well. Are we going to see the blink back from the score? Because yes, DMC is starting to micro. Drones coming out as well. Snoot knows how unbelievably important this battle is. A good concave coming out there from Snoot. But look at how much damage these stalkers are doing. They can continue to kite the roaches back. More and more production coming out. And Snoot definitely has the advantage in terms of numbers. But DMC is being rather cost effective right now. These couple of lings are going to be very, very helpful. They just tie up some of the damage. There's also Hydralisks coming through. They're focusing the Mothership Core. That denies high ground vision. That's vital. In addition, okay. Snoot is thinning on the ground, but so is DMC. The Hydralisks are just a better composition against this. DMC losing a lot of Stalkers, and Snoot bought himself enough time with the little drone pool to get out these Hydras, and that's what's allowing him to be so strong here. Wow, well, there's, there's a couple of things I think that went on in that engagement that were really important as well, Maddles. The hatch never died. That's a lot of additional larvae that he can use to reinforce now. And with the DPS from the Hydralisk, coupled with killing off that Mothership Core, like you mentioned, I think Snoot's in a comfortably defensible position now. I don't think DMC can keep this up. No, he's losing all these stalkers. Army supply is 14 to 45 in Snoot's favor. Snoot, as long as he doesn't do anything silly, is home free. At the moment, he's already gooping up this third base with creep spread from the Overlord. He's got his fourth finished. His drone count is a little lower than you would expect at this stage, but it's been at the gold, and that means that he need he doesn't need as many drones to get the same amount of income. It's only really gas he's lacking. Mm, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of ways where that engagement could have gone better for DMC medals, and I guess what comes top of mind is maybe if you're in that position... Uh, I guess you can go snipe the hatch, move back, consolidate, see where you go from there, perhaps. But it's really difficult to judge when you might be in a kill position. But that definitely wasn't the case there for DMC. And now Snoop on the counterattack here. Frankly, he leads by close to 50 supply right now. In fact, 52. This is going to get very difficult. Yeah, DMC is able to nice bling these stalkers back, so keep some of them alive but the army supply says most of it dmc was trying to take the gold base but it was scouted and that was his last little sliver of hope snoot gets the gg and he takes game number one of this best of three